600 years ago, the windswept fields of Harlaw in northeast Scotland were witness to one of the bloodiest of battles in Scottish history. Although forgotten by many people today, the Battle of Harlaw was well remembered in music and song, much of it centuries old. The bones of the dead are still turned up with the plough, and the ghosts of the dead are still seen by the travelling people who have camped on the site, though they have never stayed for long. This story takes us back through those centuries with the extraordinary Gallic incitement to the battle and the age-old struggle between war and peace. Included are Black Donald's March to Harlow, two powerful ballads describing the battle, and an 18th century fiddle pibroch based upon one of the ballad tunes. The performers are drawn together by an event that haunts the imagination and underlines the terrible pity of war, its prides, its sorrows, its courageous deeds and its grim tragedies. The name Harlow is itself as hard as the battle, for it means the stony or hard hill. On account of the amount of blood shed on that momentous day, July the 24th, 1411, the hill is also known as Reed or Red Harlow. The leaders of the two opposing armies were first cousins, Black Donald, Don who died in 1423, and Alexander Stuart, who died in 1435. Both were Gallic speakers, both were fighting for possession of the same territory, the Earldom of Ross, and both survived the battle. But many leading men were killed, Hector MacLean and Sir Alexander Irvine, Gilbert de Greenlaw, Bishop of Aberdeen, whose tombstone can still be seen in King Kel Kirk, Provost Davidson of Aberdeen, Sir James Scrimger, Sir Alexander Straton, Sir Robert Maul, Sir Thomas Murray, Adam de Skeen, William de Tullydeff, and many more besides. And, of course, many hundreds of ordinary people, including some of the criminals of Aberdeen, enlisted to defend the city. Who won? Both sides claimed victory. MacDonald retreated during the night, leaving the Earldom of Ross in the hands of Alexander Stuart, Earl of Mar. But MacDonald had inflicted great losses on the nobility of eastern Scotland, and his son was to regain the Earldom of Ross when the Scottish King James I was released from prison in England in 1424. In effect, the terrible carnage of the battle achieved little, save that it resonates through the